Hey guys, it's Linda Winter and Darla Picallo. This is a project that's been around for a while, but Darla has a couple, oh by the ways, outside of the box thinking project to do with this. This template, this is the down the middle. Down the middle, when I designed it, it's out there. Everybody's been doing it. It's another one of those, I didn't create it, but I made a template for it. And I changed the measurements a little bit. It's a little bit longer to hold pencils and pens and all those things and to have extra space. I highly recommend, this is cat hair in here, not pen, but I highly recommend putting pen caps on here if you're gonna have something like this. But let me move my fabric so you can see the down the middle and how it works. And then we're gonna show you some other projects done with the same template, but a little bit differently. If you look, we can see right here, this is open and we can see as I turn this and move this around, this guy here with all of those goodies, it kind of lays flat, but as I zip it up from the middle, it now changes. It's kind of like my home bag, my um, home bag. You can see it's flatter down here, but it's got this nice little hump to it here. So flat here with the seam binding and then flat back here, but it's got that curve to it. We're also going to talk about instead of having the zipper go down the middle, we're going to have it to where this side here doesn't come together, but it goes together like this. You'll see it. It'll be a longer version of this. And then this is a shorter version. Darla added down here a box bottom, which is really nice. So that is going to be done with this. If we look to see, it's basically this way, but a little bit shorter. And then this one, when she sent this to me, I didn't get that it was a down the middle because this was this right here. So basically, instead of folding it open, you can see she didn't use all the template either, but this allows you to do, instead of down the middle, a kind of a wide open pouch, similar to the dumpling, but not as um, extreme of a curve, so a more gradual curve. So we're gonna show you how to do this. When we show you how to do this, then we'll talk about, but not do the longer version of this, but we'll show it. And then we're gonna get into the other two as well. I wanna show you how to cut first. And it's just as simple as any other template. Fusibles, you can use SF-101 like I've done here. And you can see I pieced these pieces together because I had scraps. And so I've just cut out one and cut the other. Make sure you put them in the right direction so that they'll fuse to it. SF-101, fusible fleece. This is a lightweight fusible fleece. You can do SF-101 and fusible fleece to make it a little bit stiffer. I don't know if I'd recommend foam. Would you no. do? It's too small of a project, I think, to do foam well. A little too thick. So, yeah. So you can do maybe decor bond if you yeah. wanted to have a little bit more substance. So I've cut myself a square and it's basically eight and a half. If you notice the template says eight and a half by four and a quarter, that's eight and a half by eight and a half. So the square that you start out with when you fuse whatever it is you want needs to be at least that, but go ahead and give yourself half inch or a little bit more even wider. Fold it down the middle. If you're comfortable with the rotary cutter and fusible fleece, cutting all those layers, terrific. If not, you can cut this cut this separately and then fuse them together, totally up to you. I'm gonna fold it in half, give this a good little press. The template leads, needs to line up right on the edge of the fold, right on the edge of the fold. And I'm looking right here. I wanna make sure that that's nice and tight on there. The other thing too is nice and tight with your hand. When we go to cut around here, when we go to cut around here, I don't want those jaggedy edges. It would be in the seam allowance, so it's not a huge deal, but I don't really want to add any excess that's there. So when I've got everything lined up, pressure here. So you're putting some pressure and I cut, I turn my template. And again, I'm just gonna walk my hand down as I go. I'm gonna go straight off. Do you see how there aren't any jagged edges here? Right here where I hadn't turned the template yet. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a little bit. I call this cut off versus cutting around. I've got several videos where I talk about cutting with a rotary cutter, cutting off or cutting around. See the little bit there? Cole's coming to check it out too. There's a little bit of fabric and a little bit of fabric. While I have the template here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off so we get nice and consistency. All right, so we've got fusible fleece, two layers basically is what we were cutting plus our fabrics. This guy right here, 
and one of the others can go together as a team. Fusible fleece, fusible fleece, it's the same fabric, but I want you to see how sturdy and thick that would be. We're gonna be doing on most of the projects fusible fleece and SF-101. Do you have a preference of SF-101 on the outer fabric or versus the lining fabric, or has it mattered to you? It doesn't matter. I think sometimes with the lining, if it's showing, the fusible fleece adds a little bit more of a finished look inside of there. So it depends again on the project. All right, so we're gonna do the first one. Let's talk zippers. So we wanna make sure that we have a long enough zipper that goes all the way around. And 24 inch minimum, really. Because you're gonna you use need. one side and that one side, ha it has to be long enough to go around. Cause like if you were to try and do a 22 inch. I'm gonna inch, put the gray out so you can see it a little bit better there. If you try and do the 22 inch, it's rarely making it, but then you have the open part of the zipper. So it's really not long enough. So you need to have it so that it's longer like this. And we've got a 30 what? 36 is what this one is, so it's more than enough. And this is 24, so I want you to see the 24. In the directions I say minimum 24, but even here you can see the zipper head, let's pull it all the way closed here, and the zipper just down barely. at the bottom, just barely. So 24 minimum, I like giving yourself a little bit more so you can go a little bit longer. If you're doing zipper tape, 26 would probably be ideal to cut yourself your tape. Yes. So then I'm gonna take the zipper and I'm just gonna cut the end with a steel piece off. And then I'm gonna take the zipper head off. And then I'm gonna take just one of these zipper tapes, I'm gonna shut this off to the side. And then you're gonna to wanna to put the zipper itself down to the front side of this. And then you're gonna put it so that the lining goes inside. And again, if you're not comfortable doing all three layers at the same time, you can do the zipper tape yes. teeth down on the outside fabrics. Stitch around and then come back once that zipper is attached and you're happy with the placement, then you can add your lining fabric. So it's a double step instead of a single step, but it's all based on your comfort with zippers. And we're doing a little bit of a curve here, so it's if you're comfortable with zippers, maybe you're comfortable with zippers and dresses or skirts, but if you're not comfortable with zippers where there's a curve, then single. You can always use a um, tape, you can always use a glue, you can always baste it down. It's really your comfort level of what makes you feel like you're gonna get the best quality. The more you do zippers, the better you're gonna be at zippers. The more often you do zippers, the better you're gonna be when you do those zippers. So it's kind of the practice, 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 but it's also, if you've done zippers and then you haven't done zippers for a while, you know, then you may wanna do a practice one just to get comfortable. And if you look at what she's doing here, you know, we're basically kind of looking at this one, but this is, I want you to see, this is not a single. This is a double zipper. You can see here, this is a zipper as it really comes. Mm -hmm. So that's the big difference between what we're doing here. One side of the zipper there and here, we're not using one side, we're using a standard zipper. So if you haven't done one side of the zipper yet, there are a lot of projects out there that do one side of the zipper. It's just a different technique. Okay, I'm gonna sew this zipper tape in between the layer, two layers of fabric. And I'm gonna backstitch. And you don't ever clip your zippers. Is that something you ever do for any project? I no. really, it, to me, because of the foot that I use and the ridge for the, the zipper, zipper, the teeth. It, yeah, mm -hmm. that I, it fought, just kind of follows it. 
as long as I have the layers and the teeth in place. Now it's interesting, I've been watching her zipper foot and it's a lot different than my zipper foot and I think I'd be more successful with zippers with a foot like this. So I don't know if you have the option with your brand of sewing machine to get one type of zipper foot versus another, but this one really seems to hold in place and feed along or, or ride along the zipper teeth. Mm -hmm. This is another really quick project to do in assembly line, so you can do all your cutting yes. and then do all your sewing. If you're gonna do that, make one first, so you know what you need to do about the zippers, what you're comfortable doing if you wanna clip or pin or use a basting tape or uh, basting glue or something like that. So get comfortable with that first. But you know, the back to school time frame, being able to make these out of school fabrics or the you know, home team colors or the local sports team or the national sports team that everybody loves in your area, whatever it is, this is a great pencil case, but it's also a great tool case. It's a great makeup case. It's a great put your credit card, your money, those kinds of things in there. And you can put a little clip on it. I'll show you that when we finish up on all of this. I added one to my zipper so you can hang it from something too. Okay, then what I do is I take and trim off some of the excess around the corners. And then um, it, if you need to, then clip some of the zipper too along the edge. So now I'm gonna take and just pink the edges on the curve. And you can pink or you can snip or you can trim, you know, whatever way you like to do to get that nice curved corner when you turn this right sides out. And we'll do. And the SF101 is not going to give as much bulk as the fusible fleece. So if you're using fusible fleece, you'll definitely want to trim out some of that excess. So now I'm going to trim off this extra piece here. So I don't have that dangling in the way. And then you just turn it inside out. And Cole's coming to check it out again. <laughs> now, do you do a pressing and top stitching on this? I, I top stitch usually. You wouldn't have to, I guess, but I usually do. It just kind of holds everything in place too for use. Okay, so now that I've got it turned inside out and pressed. Right I, side out. <laughs> in, yeah, inside out, right side out. <laughs> then I'm going to top stitch it. I have to get here in the well. There we go. Clip the threads. And you could have done stitching on top of here if you wanted to, if you wanted to add you know, some excitement. Even following along the paisleys, I think, would be kind of cute. Okay, so now I'm going to take and just kind of make sure that both of my ends are the same length. And then I'm going to clip 
just a small piece out so that it gives me a start. And you're know. taking off some of the zipper teeth. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. So right. zipper teeth off of one side. I always do it on the right side. I guess it's because I'm right-handed. Yeah. Yep, maybe. So. And the zipper head is facing you, and it's right side up. Yes. And we have the red, which is the outside of the fabric, um, where the zipper teeth are showing. Yes. So then I put a real tight grip on it. All right, did you guys see what she did holding here? That, to me, is the trick. Or, again, if you've got more zipper tape, you can put it down on the table, mm -hmm. put your fingers on top of here, and then pull. So, and because I don't have it quite matching good enough, I'm going to try it one more time. And she's got a good hold with her left hand on there. That went better. It can be a little bit off because it'll be in your seam anyway when you go to do it. And then I probably need to mark my half point so that I know for matching up. And then it is ready to put the, the seam binding, binding on it. Before we do that, I want to show this because this right now if you wanted to do sunglasses, case, or whatever, yes. you could do the seam binding here, but we could have done, basically right sides together, done a lining out of the gray, and we'd have a finished seam here. So kind of like this. So similar to that in that style, and not even do the box corner there. You could do that, but you could also do it instead of one piece of zipper tape, where you're getting this right here at the end, See how it's not joined there? You don't have the zipper in the zipper. You could, if you had a shorter zipper, I had a gray zipper just a minute ago. I think uh, Cole was on top of it, but you could have where this zipper itself, it's just one zipper that's about this long. I'll see if I can find the zipper in a minute, but it would be sewn in just the way you would do a traditional zipper. Yeah. So it could go this way for flat, and that would hold your glasses. You're basically, you know, going this way. The other thing you could do is have your zipper here and a seam here, and then you could have this inside. Or not even do zipper, but do right sides together, and then this just has an opening there. So you could have that for your glasses. So there are lots of options besides the down the middle. But you can see how this is already starting to look like this one that we have here. All right. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to match the zipper to the center back. And I'm going to take a couple clips here. <laughs> and Cole is saying, what about me? I want to be on camera. And I'm going to take and Let's see. I and I grabbed red seam binding that's already prepackaged, ready to go. Black would look great here. But I wasn't thinking. I thought, oh, red, black, white. Oh, I've got yeah. gray in the inside. So, you know, whatever you like. So then I'm going to sew the one side of the tape down. And I'm I'm going to change my foot, too, so that I have a regular foot. And again, you can make your own binding. There's not a lot here. That's probably four or five inches of binding yes. that we have there. So you could make your own from fabric, um, or you can buy the prepackaged. If you have a lot on hand, like I do, use the repackaged. Totally up to you. need it quite this long in here. Probably shouldn't have cut it quite that long earlier. I cut it. <laughs> oh. I think I did. No, I, I cut did. it. Oh, did you? I'm like, I don't remember. I thought I, I did. It. <laughs> <laughs> and then I need to trim off the zipper tape that I have sticking out. And then it's a matter of folding. And then I'm going to fold the ends. And fold this down. Of 
Whoops. <laughs> then you dropped it anyway. <laughs> uh, and I see it way over there, so I'll grab you another. Oh, well, that broke. <laughs> we've had several we've stepped on today. <laughs> well, now I got a big one. <laughs> yeah. And this is where a hump jumper or yes. a jump pumper, whatever you call it, would come in handy too if you have one of those. You don't need it, but you know, some people swear by them. You have to just get in the habit of using it. Threads went and did the roundabout thing. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing you can do, which I always think about afterwards, is start, you know, a good quarter of an inch down yeah. and then back stitch and then go forward. So my machine seems to back stitch better at the edges or have a leader for you that's just the scrap that you've started sewing on first. But that's it. I mean, how cute is that? So this guy here. You can see, and the red really does show up well with this too. So this has that nice little angle here. It's flat. And again, the hum bag, the hum bag I showed to hold the rotary cutter, but this is really meant to hold all of your whatevers, whatever tools, those kinds of things. You can see with mine, I actually used the fabric here when I did this and I did it much narrower than the seam binding. So it just depends on how much you want it to show and you know, what you want to do with it. Um, you can add a strap or something. I just put one of these clips right through my zipper itself. This at some point is going to get weak because there's yes. a lot of weight. So instead of pulling here, pulling from the zipper itself as you open this up. But I love the idea of having a dangle on there and being able to have it where you can put, you know, a key or whatever it is that, you know, you need that's really important to you. You could put a tab somewhere. It's hard to do a tab here that looks yes. nice, but that's easy too. But you could do that. So there are different places. I've seen people that have done a grommet here and then had that hanging from here. I, you know, it's kind of whatever it is you want. I don't like to have something that's open where my zipper is hanging this way. So if you, wherever you put the clip, wherever it is when it's hanging, I like having it hanging this way rather than hanging this way. Because if you don't have this zipped all the way stuff. and you have it hanging this way, you're gonna maybe have stuff falling out. So, all right, so it's a really simple project. It's just dealing with the one-sided zipper. And to me, the hardest part is having a zipper that's at least 24 inches yes. or longer. And that's not something that everybody has in stock. Unless they buy zipper tape. Yeah, again, zipper and tape. If you haven't bought zipper tape before, you know, it's kind of a cool thing when you realize I can buy a roll of zipper tape and a ton of the zippers. And the size of zippers, talk about why you like the number three versus the number five. It just has a narrower width to the teeth and it doesn't have as wide as, cause like on this one is a little bit bigger and so it's a little more thicker, cumbersome. It's more for bigger projects to use cause she's got like a number five on there. It works. It's not bad as per se, but the smaller is better to do from this type of thing because it's a small. Yeah, and I was under the assumption that the bigger the zipper, it the easier it would be to feed through, mm -hmm. and not it's really not. So, you know, the things that you learn from the people that have done a lot of these. <laughs> so that's kind of a cool thing. And when you watch the videos on YouTube, people are putting the zippers on and off, taking them off and popping them right back on. It may not be, be that way for the first time that you do it or the second time or the third time. So don't give up. It will happen. It just takes some practice. Yeah, there's times when I struggle trying to get it on. At least this one went on pretty easy, but there are days when it doesn't yeah. go and the again, first time. I, I think your trick of cutting off a little bit of the zipper teeth, you know, I haven't seen many people do that online, so I think that's a good one to do. 
All right, so next we're gonna do this one here. So what we need for this is a little bit different. We're still gonna use the template. You can do this the same size as the template. What you're gonna end up getting is taller. Now she's boxed the bottom down here, so that takes a little bit of height off. But you choose how deep you want this to be. Let me show you what I mean. If you want it to be shallower even, Imagine, you know, something this narrow here. That would be a really cute one to just put your glasses or whatever. So the template allows you to do whatever depth you want. So you could square this off shorter if you wanted to. But what we need is two outside fabrics, two lining fabrics. Again, SF-101 or fusible fleece would work just fine. You choose what it is that you want. And then with the zipper, we don't need at least the 24 inch zipper because we're gonna do a zipper more traditionally. Right. And we also need a zipper tab. You'll see her putting this on in a minute. Three inches by, I mean, an inch and a half by four inches or so is good. And you'll need two of those too. All right. Okay, what I'm gonna do is cut the end of my zipper tape off. And then I'm gonna take and put so that the good side is on the outside, but I'm going to be folding it in half with the good sides together and then putting it so that it's here and then I'm going to sew a 3 8 seam or, or fourth, either one you could do. And then I'm going to top stitch this back this way. And you're okay with the raw edges because those are going to be caught in the seams. Yep. And there's a bunch of different ways to do the zipper tabs. Find the method that works well for you. This one is easy and it's scrap friendly too. Leftovers and then I usually throw away. trim it down to close to what my zipper width is. It doesn't have to be exact, but I just trim it down like that. So now that I, this I'm gonna consider my top. So I'm gonna take a part and put the zipper head back on. And I'm going to take and cut just a little bit off. And again, she's cutting off some of the zipper teeth. Just to give me something to hold on to when I try to pull the zipper down over it. And then I'm doing a really tight grip. And you can see that there's not a lot of grouping one way or the other with the thing. It's pretty straight. And so I'm going to zip it up almost to the top. Then I know that I need to have about 16 inches because this doesn't need to go all the way to the bottom of it. But because I you're going to end up doing a box corner on it. And so then it's a matter of putting on this side the other one. And again, if you wanted this to be a lot shallower, you know, you could cut this off and your zipper that you have doesn't yes. need to be nearly as long. So again, you choose, you know, grab one of your sunglass cases that you like, one of your zipper cases that you like, you know, grab whatever that you have on hand and look at the measurements that you have there, add enough for that box bottom and for your seam allowances, and then you can choose how long you want that to be. And what I mean by squaring off, you know, if I decide that I want it to be a particular length, I've got this right here at my five. Wherever it is that I want, I can place the temporal right along the edge. I'm going to put it at the 12 and actually 11 and a half there. And when I go to cut that off, that's going to give me this amount. So the template is great for squaring off too to make this shorter. So one more time to make sure. You know, if you've got scraps only, then maybe your scraps are going to tell you how long. If you've got only so many zippers, maybe your zipper is going to tell you how long or how deep this project is. So you may put some logic into it or you may do what it is that you have 
on hand. So I love the idea of doing sets, you know, so you could do one that was narrower, you could do one a little bit deeper and one that's a little bit longer um, and have sets for them. Okay, and now I'm going to trim off the extra from the width. And then I'm going to take and find where my center is. And then I want to clip so I know. For meeting the center mark of this. Oops, didn't get it. And then also for the center of this. And then since I'm going to make the gray be the outside, then I'm going to make sure that the right side is put onto the gray for the zipper part. And then I'm going to take the center and match it to the center. And I had originally suggested that we do the gray as the outside with the red as the lining. If I were really making this, this red would be way too busy, I think, for a lining. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I wanted to do that was to be able to differentiate when you looked at the projects, which had the gray on the outside, which had the gray on the inside. But see how easy this is on your eyes when you look inside? This is going to be pretty busy when we look at, you know, opening that up and having that pop of red. But the pop of red is kind of a cool thing, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're more subdued, then this is on the outside showing, more subdued, and then you've got that pop inside. I'm going to change to my zipper foot. And I'm going to start at the center and go down the side. Because that way then I can kind of see where I'm going. And again, you're not pinning or clipping or basting or anything else. But again, if your comfort level with the zipper is not so good, then go ahead and pin, clip, baste, basting tape, basting glue, whatever makes you feel more confident. And talk about what you did with the zipper tape there at the end, that fabric, the zipper tab, I should say, that you continued to sew that in place so that it's going to give us this piece bottom. right here. Yes, and you don't have to have it go all the way to the bottom because you're going to be doing the box corner, which takes up that. So now I'm going to sew on the other side.
Now I'm going to take and pull my zipper up and past where I was working so I don't get a dent <laughs> for the zipper head. Yep. And this is a more traditional zipper approach than the first one that we did. Okay, then I'm going to take and pink the edges of the curve. And then after this, we're going to turn this right sides out, press it, and then top stitching on this one as well. Yeah. All right, so we'll come back when we finish with that. Okay, here we are, and uh, we've got it all pressed and the zipper is on one half. This is the center, this is the outside. You don't have to have the zipper open because we will be working through this open hole, but we need to put on the other side. So we're going to find the half mark. So I'm gonna to have to do that first and then snip it. And then we'll find the center of this one too. And then snip it. And then we're gonna make sure that you get the gray side to the gray side. And then on the other side of this will be the lining side. And you're gonna to wanna to match up your clips that you did for the centers. And match up your clips with a clip. <laughs> well, clip with a neat <laughs> clip or whatever. So that way then I start at the center and go the other side and then start at the center and go the other side. So I think we can fast forward because it's the same thing that we did on the other half. Okay, this is what we have with everything sewed up. And then now we're gonna take and turn it inside out. And after we get it turned inside out, then we're gonna to head to the ironing board and iron the And of course I turned it so that the inside is out. And I think that's a good thing to show though, because it's don't freak out. You know, this is the lining now that's showing. But that's when we'll go to the box corners and yeah. stuff later. So that's why I have it. But if you want, you can still unzip the zipper further to do for ironing to make sure that you have the side that you sewed ironed. Yep. And so we'll press this and be right back. Yep. Okay, now we've got it pressed and Everything looks good. This is the outside that we're showing. So we're going to turn it inside out because now we're gonna sew across the bottom. And I just wanted to remind you again that if you wanted to do this taller, let's place this down and see how tall this thing is. This zipper case, even with the box bottom, it's gonna be pretty deep. So again, if you had wanted to with a shorter zipper, have this trimmed even shorter so that yes. it would be much narrower. Here you can see the zipper tabs that are here, or the zipper, what tab? I it's guess a, really a zipper a tab. tab. Extension. Yeah. So this guy here and this guy here, you know, the zipper is gonna start opening here and it's gonna start opening here. But if you had a shorter zipper, you know, this could look really cute, you know, at this width or at this width, or, you know, you choose, you can see how much bigger this is. It's very much the size of the template. It's gonna shorten up once we do the box bottoms. Yes. So now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam. And a back stitch. Actually, I probably wouldn't even have to back stitch because I'm gonna be doing the box bottoms pretty soon. Okay, then I want to take and finish the fabric edges. So I'm going to zigzag.
the very edge. And you could do a surged edge here if you wanted to, yes. I guess. You probably aren't going to add a binding, a finished binding, because of the box bottoms. You could. I did that on one of the projects years ago where I did both the bottom and then the box bottoms with the seam binding. It's a lot more work than I think the project calls for. Okay, now we want to do our boxed bottom, and we've got the box it, place it? <laughs> box it, square, square it, place, place it, it template set. Had it right. One of the five templates that's part of that set, and this has a one inch, but you could make this work for half of an inch, for three quarters of an inch, by having it hanging off of the fabric edge. I think I'm just going to adjust it because this is so tall, I'm going to cut it at one inch, but it'll end up being about a two and a half inch bottom. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fine. big, which will change the look of this completely. And I think yes. that'll be kind of cool. Now, do you want to use the rotary cutter or do you want to trace it? I think I'll trace it because there is extra bulk there. Yeah. And you can use whatever kind of marking tool that you have. Is that going to write? Let's do a, that may not write. You want to do a Sharpie? Yeah. And I gave you a silver. You could do um, anything here, uh, any kind of pen that you want. Just realize that when you go from your left hand to your right hand, where you mark, the way you hold that tool might change the size of it too. So just make sure they're consistent. And I forgot, you have to remember to allow for the seam allowance and I didn't on this one. So I'm gonna go back and mark this top one. And what she means by that is down here, we've got the seam allowance here. Yeah, so I want so, to measure it from the seam allowance to have it one inch, one inch. Rather than the edge. Yeah. Oh, now, if you wanted it at three quarters of an inch, having it lined up with the seam allowance would be a good thing. Yes. But since I already have my seam there, I'm just going to cut. And I think because of all the bulk, scissors here work better than a rotary cutter. With a rotary cutter, you're cutting through all those sewn edges and it's just not as easy to to cut. Did I get it? Nope. Okay, then we're ready to box in the corners. So what she did was she brought the bottom seam up to the side seam and lined up those edges which is what the template gives you. Yep. Oops, I'm doing zigzag. I better <laughs> put it on straight stitch. I'm gonna have to take it off. Okay. And then on the other side, when I do the box at corner, I'm going to make sure that my seam is um, going the same direction as the other side. And the other thing you can do on either side and decide where your zipper placement is so you can figure it out, but you can take zipper tape, you can take binding tape, you can take ribbon, you can do fabric, and you can make a strap so that you've got a strap that's hanging. So it's a wristlet or it's whatever. So even if you just did, you know, a little one inch piece yeah. and then put one of the accessories on there, um, then it allows you to snap it onto something. And then I'm going to take and zigzag the edges on this also. And again, this, if you wanted to do seam binding, you could do seam binding on here if you wanted That's, to finish the edge. That's true. If you're making these to sell and you want to ask more money for them, then that seam binding is going to get you a little bit more uh, clout 
you know, just to be able to say I've finished this edge off. But if you're making a bunch of these and they really are going to be utilitarian projects, I think it's a really cute, dressy kind of a project. Uh, it's a nice alternative to just a plain old zipper bags. And then after I zigzag it, if it, you know, like the cotton fabric may fray in certain areas, sometimes I kind of pick it up and just kind of pull on it and then cut it. Yeah, and fray check works really well too for yeah. a lot of these things. I want to see what this boxed bottom looks like. We've got the Since one inch, it so it's going to be bigger than this, so we're really going to have it more accentuated, and it'll totally change the look. That's what I love about the templates. You can play with this to make it whatever it is that you want. Look at the difference between these two. Flip, let's flip there. There we go, and you can see this versus that. Look at the size of the box bottom. I think that's really cute. So when we're looking at inside, we can see it's a totally different look for the project. So it still is a lot deeper. If you had done a much smaller box bottom, this would be even longer. The bigger the box bottom, the narrower this is going to be. So you can see this is going to hold quite a bit. And when we open this one up, this is going to hold a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And again, you may choose to do, again, the opposite, the gray in the inside and not have that pop of color. So basically would be this, you know, imagine with the finished edge. So like that, I mean, that's cute too. So if you're going to do matching sets, do one with the lining, you know, on the outside with the, the gray on the outside and then do one with the red on the inside. But I think this is a really cute project to be able to say this here, this here, this here, and then this one that we really haven't talked about much. And we won't show this one how to make it, but you get the idea and we'll spend a minute on that. But all of these are done from this template. This is the down the middle. And Kat just came over to join us. And Kat and Cole are not buddies, so I'm gonna see if I can get Kat to go away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk a minute about this. Not in detail, because we're not gonna spend the time here, but talk a little bit about that too. This was done and shortened and I lined it. I did the one single zipper tape that goes all the way around. And I, in this outside seam, when I sewed it together, I put the D-ring with the little fabric to hold it there. But I sewed my two pieces end for end. So I sewed them this side together to make it like that. And then I put the zipper in because it's a one um, side of the zipper. And then I have the zipper tab down here. And then I sewed the bottom and the um, lining separate. But I also had room for a couple cards in here. Yeah. And again, using the template, you could make this longer, you can make this shorter. Yes. So you choose the size of this. And again, doing several of them that are just a little bit longer, you're not going to change the width here so much. This one, very easy to change, I guess, height here. So mm -hmm. this one, the length going this way. So it's really based on the project. So when we're looking at this one, again, you can see with the template, we could make it a little bit longer here if you wanted to, a little bit shorter too. All right, guys, so down the middle. Down the middle was originally this project here, this project here. You can see when it's open, it lays flat at the top, but it has this nice curve that is open when, or up when you've got it zipped closed. So that's this project. This one, I love Darla's twist on it. And we've got, again, two variations on that. That's done here. You can go to the website, winterdesigns.com, to be able to find this. When you're there, products and templates, just like always, click on that in the search bar. We're gonna type in down, down, or you can type in middle, any of those words that are gonna stand out. And when we click on down, as we scroll down, we're gonna be able to see down the middle, zipper case, it's the very first one, and you can get the template there. Lots of flexibility with this template. One more thing that you can customize and personalize the way you like. Thanks to Darla for coming up with variations on a theme. Again, being an outside of the box thinker, that's the stuff that I love about that no slip material. It allows us to do that and have all kinds of flexibility. And Kat is right in the front. Oh, I 
love it. There's Cat. All right, Cat is saying goodbye. Thanks for watching. Have a great time. Like, share, comment, all of those good things. You know, social media stuff. We appreciate it very much. Thanks so much. And Darla, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye.